Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. Do me a favor, if you guys are into car shows, please hit the subscribe button, maybe hit the like button. Not just for me, but for everybody putting together channels like this. It takes a lot of work to stop what you're doing on your project, set up the camera, do the editing. I mean, I do it for fun, I do it for myself, but it's you guys who keep me motivated. So do that, and if you got friends who are into cars, please share, hey, check this idiot out. You know, I'll take anything, I'm not, I'm not too proud to beg. On today's episode, I'm gonna walk you guys through uh, how to mock up your drivetrain for an engine and transmission swap. Now this happens to be for an early Bronco, but a lot of the principles are true for any engine swap into a vehicle. So in the stock Bronco, it comes with a 302, and if you have an automatic, a C4. By the way, I have an extra C4 if somebody wants to buy it. Uh, in previous episodes, you saw I bought a 97 Ford Explorer with the 5.0 and the 4R70W transmission, which is what I've got here. It's not a direct swap, so what I'm going to do today is show you guys what you need to look for and what fab you need to do to get it to work. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, the second thing I'm going to do is check the, um, the accessory drive, because I don't think it clears right here. I've seen it in other shows where the, um, it interferes with this cross member, so I'm going to have to notch the cross member to make room for an idler pulley. Most of the work actually is out back, and that's with the cross member and uh, advanced adapters kit, and I'll show you that right now. So first things to know is the engine is offset in the frame rails, right? This is so the driver has more clearance, which is also why the passenger side floorboards get hotter, okay? So on the cross member, sorry, I'm going to change my angle here. On the cross member, the hole that's closer to the frame rail is on the passenger side. So this needs to sit under, oh, sorry, under these holes. And you can see it's not, it's too far back because this transmission is there. Tom sells a kit where th that modifies that to come out farther, like where my finger is, on both of those. And then also in that kit, the transmission cross member is modified. It's notched here so that the, the adapter can sit in farther into the, the cross member, which is how it needs to be. I meant to order the Tom's uh, cross member kit, I just forgot, and since I just did a big shipment, I'm like, should I just modify it rather than doing a single shipment for it? Um, I think I'm just going to modify it, but knowing how much work it's going to take, I think you're better off just buying the kit. Uh, and then a word on the advanced adapters kit, so you need two things to do this swap. The advanced adapters kit, that modifies the back of the transmission and the transmission gear and the transfer case so you can mate the uh, 4R70W to the DNA 20. Uh, and then you need the cross member kit so it fits within the frame rails properly. So for the advanced adapters kit, it's super high quality. I recommend uh, Tom's an authorized retailer, Tom's Rocco Parts. So use them because those guys have done it before. Like I was asking them specific questions about it when I was down at the show and shine. So they're a good resource to go to if you have specific questions. Um, a quick dig on uh, Ford. Um, I like Ford but they need to sort of take control of transmission naming. Actually, this is true for most uh, auto manufacturers. Like, take it away from the engineers. Like, it's okay that they call it a 4R70W or a 700R4 or a 4L60E or whatever, but can we just name them cool things? Like, can this be the Scorpion transmission or something? So you're like, I'm gonna do a Scorpion swap. That sounds like a little more, you know, aggressive, you know, but I'm going to do a four, I have to stop four R70W swap. You, like, it doesn't roll off the tongue, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm off my soapbox. So I need to start cutting and fabbing. So this kit is made up of, the stock, um, the stock bushing is made up of washer, bushing, bushing, washer, right? With a sleeve, a brass sleeve in the middle. So what Advanced Adapters kit does, is they give you this smaller sleeve so you, you just slide that into the uh, slide it into slide it into 
you slide it, you machine this center. <laughs> slide that in there, and then this bolt slides through there, and this thread going through the whole assembly, this thread goes into your advanced adapters housing. So it's, you know, it's not without modification. I'm going to see if I have a, a drill bit that can machine out this, uh, this bushing to accept this other bushing. I think that's how I need to do it. I'm just making this up as I go along, in case you haven't noticed. If you don't have a pair of digital calipers, I, I highly recommend them. So, I mean, these are like eight bucks at Harbor Freight, but they do it. So this is 0.62 inches outer diameter. And this bushing is 0.56 inches inner diameter. So I gotta take 60 thousandths out. And the question is, do I have a drill that is 0.62 outer diameter? What's 0.62 in fractions? I don't really know. 0 0.39, 0.49. Come on, dude. I do not have a drill bit that's 0.62 inches in diameter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to McClendon's and see if I can find a brass bushing that is a little thinner wall. This is pretty thick wall. See that? So I'm gonna see if I can get a thinner wall brass bushing and uh, fit that in there. Huh? Sounds like fun, right? Right? No. No, it's not fun. I haven't done the sleeve thing yet. I just put it in uh, without that brass, not, it's not brass, but the galvanized bushing. I just put in the, the uh, advanced adapters bushing and then I threaded it into this side. All right, and this side I just held the assembly up with that old nut. And you can see there that I'm about 7 sixteenths shy, which means these two holes here need to be elongated to fit into that and that is actually in the instructions. I'm back from the hardware store. Let me show you. I bought some round tube here, and this is the bushing that comes with an adapter kit, and that fits right in. It's galvanized, and I'm going to use a lot of um, polyurethane safe grease when I do my final assembly, and that'll keep the rust down in this because you got metal on metal. That's a, that's a rust risk, but with enough grease, you don't have to worry about it. Three different thicknesses, uh, widths of eighth inch. Steel. I know you get them cheaper if you just buy a sheet from Everett Steel, but they're closed today and uh, This will help me build out the cross member modifications the cross member support modifications and the front cross member modification here for the uh, uh, Accessory drive So I'm gonna set up a time-lapse. I think I've never done that with this camera But we'll set up a time-lapse and you'll see me fab this up back on that time lapse um, you know you can't really tell what I'm doing you just saw that it took a lot of work but basically the I don't know if the original Bronco um, bushings because I, I don't know where they are they're in storage somewhere I don't know if they're a smaller diameter than the aftermarket ones but the washer doesn't fit like this the washer let me see if I can get this up close the, when you when it sits in the circle it's offset so I had to Pac-Man cut this thing and you see now it fits in there and I also had to bevel that so that took a while then when I ran my bolts through the uh, the it wasn't uh, it wasn't like completely tapped all the way through here on the back side so I had to uh, run a tap through both of these and then it was still too long because it ended up hitting the housing on this side which is at more of an angle than this side so then I was like shorten the bowl then one was too short so I wasted a grade 8 bowl I'm going to use it for something else 
So that's what it took just to get the stupid bushings onto the cross member. Then I cut the cross member. Um, this is to clear the transmission side, and then on the transfer case side, there's this little web here. The reason I'm not just hogging it all out is because I still want to retain use of the snubber, which goes there, and kind of bumps against the transfer case. I like the idea of having that a lateral support for the uh, for the transfer case man so I'm gonna elongate these holes with a uh, burr and then you know build a structure here once I test fit everything so we're getting there can you guys comment is the time lapse like interesting I mean it I don't, I don't know it doesn't take much time but if it's boring it let me know what you think, all right? Maybe time lapse and an explanation of what I did. I'm not really sure. Could use some feedback on that one, guys. Okay, you can see I'm boxing this in. That's gonna sit level like that. I've got this one side boxed. I need to do one, two, three, and then a four. And then I'm, I'm good. There it is. Not too bad. This notch is for the bolt that's on that side of the adapter housing, but it's done. It's welded up. It's okay looking, not too, I mean, it looks like the one you buy, but it's such a pain, guys. Just buy it, trust me. It's not worth your time. I'm proud that I did it, but man, I'd much rather it come in a box. Oh my goodness. There's so much grinding. So here's the cross member installed. After I showed you uh, a shot of it, I ended up having to go in and clearance a little more here to clear this portion of the adapter. So now it's on and it's set. So that part's done. And then you can see it's, it's actually on the weight of the mounts. So um, this gets left alone, but you can see this needs to be brought out about two inches, but it's after midnight. So I scribed these holes on both sides and we will hit that tomorrow. And yes, that's my underwear on the floor. Okay. I was using it to plug the hole in the transfer case. You know, what can I tell you? It's tomorrow. I took the supports and I extended them by two inches and then I stiffened them up with the center cross brace. So these should be plenty strong. There's the uh, extensions done with the uh, transmission sitting on the weight. So that's bolted in. And I mean, I'm obviously gonna clean all this up, but uh, I'm testing, I'm test fitting everything. So it looks good. Moving on to the accessory drive testing. So I'm, I'm just knocking up all the Explorer accessories. And as I suspected, this pulley it's actually not the pulley that hits it's the arm that holds and I, once that gets in a place the pulley might hit so i have two things i need to do i need to go in and redo this brace and lower it so that and, and notch the frame here so that this can sit in deep and then i think this will also hit so i'm gonna have to basically see out this frame and make room for that accessory drive Okay, I just got back from the East Coast. Um, it's a couple days later. I'm gonna pull the engine transmission out and then notch the frame. Maybe I should have uh, re-measured before I went on vacation because obviously I cut that a little bit to the left. Not a big deal. I'm just going to notch it here just so the, the pulley is sort of centered in my cutout. More for looks than anything. That didn't work. I couldn't get anything through so I just grabbed a ruler.
Okay, there it is. Done, boxed in, welded up. So that should be plenty strong, if not stronger than the original. So, time to drop the engine back in. I've got my engine in. Uh, the accessory drive fits in great. I'll show that to you in a second, and then we'll walk around and talk about what we've done on this episode and what the next steps are. Of course, now that I have a camera on, I'm noticing I forgot to weld that uh, edge, but I'll do that when I'm doing the holes on the bottom of the frame. But it fits in there great. There's plenty of clearance, uh, probably more than I need, but it'll make fitting the belt on there that much easier. The advanced adapters, uh, adapter housing is on the transmission. It's got you know, we hogged out the holes for the polyurethane mounts, modified the washer and beveled the mount so it would fit up against that housing. And then we also welded on two inches on either side of the supports there so that uh, the cross member, which will sit two inches further back on the uh, swap, has a place to go. One thing that is often brought up is, do you see that? That's the transmission pan there. So once I mock up the Dana 20, I'm going to put the front drive shaft in. And I don't have the front axle in, but I can approximate where that's going to go and where that's going to hit. And then we can talk about notching that front drive or the transmission pan to, to clear the front drive shaft. What's next on Matt's garage? I'm going to put the transfer case on the back of this adapter. There's studs that come with the adapter kit. And I'm going to put it on there, not permanently, but I think I'm going to do an unboxing and install of Tom's Bronco Parts Twin Stick Shifter for the J-Style uh, transfer case. So you can see how that all goes in with the body off, because I think that'll be a, a, make it really easy to see how it installs. And then I'm thinking about putting the body on the, on the uh, chassis so that I can cut the holes out for the J-Style shifter. And then while it's on there, I'm thinking... I, I'm thinking about mocking up the exhaust manifolds, routing my exhaust, maybe even making my exhaust, um, just figuring out my brake line routing, figuring out all the stuff that attaches to the chassis or needs to clear the chassis so that when I go to actually assemble this thing, uh, I know everything fits and I won't have to do a lot of cutting and grinding on a nice painted body or a nice painted frame. Uh, because once I take this engine out again for the last time, uh, it's going to get blown apart from the transmission, it's going to go to the machine shop, the transmission I'm going to rebuild, and, and so I'm not going to have that package to do my mock-up again until a long time from now. Uh, you know, I, I think at the beginning of season two, I'd said th two years, and Niobe was like three years, and I think Niobe's right. I, I really do think this project's going to take me forever. I basically have to recreate the body on top of this chassis. I have to... Um, touch every single nut and bolt on this thing. And I have to do this while maintaining a, like a fruitful employment. I don't know. Next time, Matt's Garage.